another contender enters the ring, the Didding 804 Lab Suite. A legendary lab grinder designed for single dosing and retail bag grinding that is less common than other popular grinders in its class. With a nice bag knocker and a movable lab tray at three adjustable heights, the Lab Suite is a unique addition to the 2020 Grinder Showdown. The burrs are what sets this apart from the standard 804 Lab. Featuring 80 millimeter cast steel burrs, the geometry is different than a standard 804. Didding, it's a name that we don't talk about that much anymore, even though it is technically owned by Hemro Group, which also owns Malconig. But they share the same burr technologies for a lot of their different products, and actually, a lot of their products are very similar. So, whenever I had the opportunity to get a hold of a Didding 804 Lab Suite, I pounced at the opportunity because it would take care of two things. First is it would be the burrs from the Malconig Peak. That's right, they're the same burrs that was confirmed by representatives at Hemro at some point in the past online. And it's also a great single doser. It's designed as a bag grinder, so you could just get the stuff in and out of the burr set as quickly as possible with as little as retention as necessary. So it was the perfect thing to test as an augmentation, kind of a bonus round of the 2020 Grinder Showdown. So let me talk a bit about what I liked about it, what I didn't, and why I think that you should be taking a deeper look at this grinder. So I had extensive experience with the regular Ditting 804 Lab over a number of years in a professional capacity. And I always really prized it for its ability to produce crystalline, transparent, very deep, flavorful coffee. And the only real difference in my mind between that and the EK43 I had at the time, which again is the, the one with the older style old burrs, which were really, really, really good for filter coffee in terms of clarity and sweetness. The only real difference that I found between the 804 and the Didding, I mean, sorry, the 804 and the Malconig was really the sweetness and a bit of the way that flavors were blended together. So whenever I had the opportunity to take a look at the lab suite, I wanted to see what was the difference in this new burr geometry or the one that they had put in that versus the, the 804 that I knew and loved so well. And as well as see, how does it work for espresso if it's actually an espresso burr in it from the Malconic Peak? So testing both espresso and filter coffee with it was very eye-opening. I am very firmly in the camp of believing in a dedicated grinder for filter coffee and one for espresso really trying to think about the different principles of the particle mixtures we're looking for, knowing that we want to have a very clear and transparent cup, have the particle sizes relatively be the same for filter coffee. And for espresso, I want some level of blending. I don't want it to be completely mixed up, but I also don't want them all to be perfectly identical like a roller mill, right? So I was very shocked whenever I was able to get fantastic results for both the filter coffee and the espresso from this. That was not my expectation going in. And it really reinforces the notion that you can never ever let your priors dictate how you're gonna act really in anything. And I was very happy to have that experience because after so many A and B tests that we did with the regular grind, I mean, with the other grinders and the regular 2020 grinder test, this was a, a great way to cap it off with being the only one that I would strongly recommend for both filter and for espresso. No other grinder took as clear of a lead as this did compared to everything else that I tested. Now, I did not use any of the test coffee from the 2020 grinder showdown, which is why it is not being included in that traditional analysis that I've been spending time working on. So uh, I don't want to say take it with a grain of salt because I have a fairly clear image of each of these different units and what their strengths are. But please know that the disclaimer is that the test coffees were not the same for this. But if I was to inject the 804 Lab Suite into the 2020 Grinder lineup, I would say that it would be neck and neck for espresso in terms of my favorite. I was able to get very high strength shots, also have a very good clear sense of flavor and body. In fact, I liked it and the Versalab the best. I just happened to like the Versalab a bit more for espresso. And in terms of filter coffee, it came in, would come in number two compared to again, these burrs. And then after that, then the Ode would come into play as I guess number three, if you wanted to you know, really start to number them down. But I really, really am confused by how a burr geometry that could produce such a 
classical espresso in terms of elevated body, blended flavors to a degree, high strength, good sweetness, and good flavor clarity, but not have any powderiness, have still a very clear cup in the very clear filter cup, not have any powderiness, any astringency. It really flew in the face of everything that I'd tested so far, except maybe just the EK43S and the EK43, but I think that this is even cleaner, just a little bit less sweet and even cleaner. So if you have a chance to either single dose a Malconig Peak or to try the 804 Lab Suite, get ahead of a set of these cast burrs, I strongly recommend it. It does not taste like any of the other grinders in a traditional sense that it, it you you're able to get great flavor in, in both methods and I'm just very confused by it. So this really raises a big question for me in terms of burr technologies and why different results are coming from different grinders and burr combinations. And that's really that if I had to name a number one and number two for filter coffee, both of the burrs were cast burrs. They were not machined in a traditional sense just out of a of block of steel. There was some degree of casting the metal together to make sure that that burr is able to produce the geometry it does, the sweetness and the flavor complexity. I would love to have a better understanding of what it is that really sets that almost seemingly older technology apart from a machined burr, which to be clear, to my understanding, all of the burrs used to be cast for most commercial grinders in general, and it slowly has transitioned into being machined. And uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the machining is too perfect and that the natural imperfections of potentially what the casting might look like or somehow adding some kind of secret sauce in terms of blending the flavors together just a little bit, maybe producing more fines. The imperfections that you, almost like a wabi-sabi burr, is that the answer? If you have any ideas, please put it in the comments or reach out to me. I can't find any good information on this outside of just anecdotal reports like the ones that I have here. And I would really love to, at least if there is a real answer, try and boost it or put it out there as widely as possible because, hey, if this and another cast burr are taking the, the crown for filter coffee and doing very well in espresso, why aren't we seeing more things like this, right? So yeah. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, you, if maybe anybody at Hemro Group is watching this, please reach out. Really would love to know an answer or share it with the world. Thank you.